let's look at this particular paper question. So paper 3, option G, from May 2010. We're going to outline three factors that affect plant distribution. And I've got this clever little mnemonic that I was thinking about for you guys. And uh, you, if you just write plants all the way down here, and these are the different factors that can affect plant distribution. P stands for pH, L stands for light intensity, A is a bit dodgy, it stands for aqua or water avail availability. Fourthly is nutrients, T stands for temperature, and S stands for salinity. And these are the six different factors that you need to know for plant distribution. You can even port these over to um, animal distribution as well if you want. I'm only going to talk about the top three because it talks about outlining three different factors. With pH, plants can only tolerate a narrow pH range. If it's too acidic, they're not happy. If, too, if it's too basic, they're not happy either. Quite simple. The next thing that we're going to talk about is light intensity. It's a bit different from pH in the fact that uh, if it's a low light intensity, the plants tend to be unhappy, but as it goes up, they become more and more happy, up to an optimal point. I suppose there is a, uh, a point in uh, light intensity where it can be too intense as well. Very similarly to that is a water availability. So uh, in general, plants uh, they prefer areas which have more water as opposed to areas which have less water. And this is because of photosynthesis as well as, uh, as, well as growth and other things as well. So those are the three points that you get for that particular question. Now, the next question we're going to talk about below is outline a method used to correlate the distribution of plant species with an abiotic factor. And the thing you need to know about this is you need to talk about either line, uh, you need to talk about line transects, or transects in general. But I'm going to talk about a line transect because that's the one I'm comfortable with. I'm not going to talk about the other one. What happens is that you, you're in the forest or in the jungle wherever your given area is, and you measure out two particular points. And I looked up a few YouTube videos on this, just to double check this, because I hadn't done this particular concept for a while. Um, you get two particular points, you measure them apart so that they are approximate, you can, they're an arbitrary number apart, so it could be 20 meters, for example. All plants touching that line are included in the data. So if you have a little shrub which touches the line, or a big tree which touches uh, that, that line, then you include those particular plants in the data. And after you've done that, then you measure the distance from point zero, how far the plant is found along that particular line. So it's a bit easier if you, if you had a diagram, which I'm not going to draw here, but you plot the plants which are found along that particular line, and you, pl and you plot every single plant which you find. And you also want to uh, record the height as well uh, and other details that are um, available as well. You might also want to record um, any other abiotic factors that are available, such as the pH or the amount of water. And then you can correlate the growth of particular plants with the abiotic factors um, which are present. Finally, you can compare the biotic and abiotic factors together. So by all means, this was a, a bit of a tricky question and I had to brush up on it, but a manageable one, I believe.